Let's talk some Noah Fant, someone who was a first-round pick, former 20th overall selection, who I think it's fair to say hasn't fully lived up to the hype, but maybe a change of scenery playing in Seattle could be a good thing. He came over in the Russell Wilson trade, so uh, let's get into some film first, and then we'll talk about some numbers and then just some general thoughts about him, although I have to say uh, apologies that the film is going to be, you know, not the highest quality. I don't know why it's the case uh, with uh, it was with this one and uh, also with uh, another video I made, a Bradley Chubb video. There's also some rough quality, so I don't know if it's just a Broncos thing or what, but work with what we have here. Anyway, what you're going to see here is, you know, uh, Noah Fant is going to be running a deep route right here as he, it's in man coverage. So these are situations that, honestly, these are the kind of situations you want a wide receiver to be able to excel at. Cover one, so only a single safety deep, a sideline route. If a tight end can get open in these situations, that can do a lot of good for a football team. And as you notice, right when this play begins, you're going to see how Fant, I think his speed is just what really allows him to work. He's just able to blow by the defender who's trying to cover him. And this is kind of what was, you know, hyped up about him in college was that he was very fast for his size and very, just very fast in general. So because of that, uh, I think it just, it, you know, poses that tough question of, do you put a fast guy on him, but your fast guy probably isn't as big as him. So do you put a big guy on him, but then your big guy isn't going to be as fast as him. You're kind of damned if you do, damned if you don't, because, you know, now Fant is able to get by the defender who's covering him, and the defender only really has one choice here. He has to play Fant. He cannot turn around and play the ball, because if you guess incorrectly at when the ball is coming, well, then you're probably just going to get really burned, because then you're looking away from Fant and don't know how he could adjust. So you have to make sure that you just play Fant. And as you see, this is a good throw, and Fant is able to make the grab and get the ball inside the 20, so also kind of bumps into a cheerleader there as well. So very good play from Fant, and these are the kind of things that can excite you about. And when I say he's shown flashes, it's not just that he's shown some plays where he's done some nice things. No, he's like legitimately shown some you know times where he's been like just a great receiving tight end not just a good one but a great one so you hope for a little bit more consistency I think it's fair to say but like you, you, you've seen this on tape and like something like this is another good example of kind of the stuff that he can do where it's going to be zone coverage that he's going up against and you see the little cons the concept on the screen where receiver is going to run a deep route and Infant, who is the tight end on this play obviously uh, he's the one I've circled in white he's going to simply just run out to the flat the hope is that the receiver takes some attention away Fant can kind of hide uh sort of over the sideline area and you throw it to him and he can just pick up some yards the chances of this going for a ton of yards seems slim but it might go for some. As you see, you're uh, going to see that eventually Fant does get wide open. The play concept works, but watch what Fant does from this point on. I mean, as you see, the ball gets flipped to him and watch him just turn the corner and pick up a good amount of yards there. He doesn't quite get the touchdown, but again, that speed allows him to just get more yards than the average tight end would, and that's just another one of those benefits that Fant brings to a football team, and you hope that you can kind of, uh, you know, find that and make it better. A play like this, which I'm not even going to break down the whole play because the actual concept itself is kind of meaningless as to why I'm showing it. Were, uh, so I paused it right here. I'm just going to play it and you can watch what happens. Look, as you see, so uh, you know, quarterback takes a snap. He's going to eventually find Fant underneath for sort of a check down. And you look at all of the defenders who are coming in to tackle him, but watch what Fant does. Again, as you see, this is just speed. This is just him being faster than a lot of other players. And you know, it's, it's the the other fast guys on the you know, field that have to be the ones to bring him down because he is someone who can move and he can be shockingly fast even on, a, on an NFL football field where obviously guys are kind of known for being fast. One last play to talk about. Again, it's going to be kind of a similar type thing where what's going to happen is so that's where he is on the field. Look at how right when this play begins, you're going to see how Teddy Bridgewater is going to eventually just flip the ball to Fant right here. So now he has the ball and let's play my favorite game of guess where he's going to end up getting tackled at. Guess how many yards he's going to get right here. Is it going to be around the 50 maybe? That's probably what feels about right uh, potentially. But watch how he accelerates well and is able to get all the way to about the 43. So again, are we talking about the most unbelievable play ever? No, but there's these little flashes that, listen, getting turning a 10-yard gain into a 17-yard gain, there's still value in that. That still helps, and that still absolutely will help you rack up some yards. And when you factor on the other stuff he can do, there's definitely stuff to get excited about. 
if you want to look at his PFF grades, which, you know, uh, I always find his stuff interesting through his first three seasons. Didn't show much as a rookie in 2019, but that's not surprising. A lot of tight ends, you know, unless your name is Kyle Pitts, typically if you're a tight end, it's just going to take you some time to develop. That's that's simply how that works. I don't know why it is. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but that seems to be the way that it works. Um, the one thing that you see that is definitely a, a bit of a, you know, concern, I would say, is the run blocking has not been very good. And for someone who doesn't pass block very often, running run blocking grades being bad, you know, again, you can survive with a tight end who isn't a dominant blocker, but you would ideally like your tight end to be a better blocker than what Fant has been. And to Fant's credit, he did see an improvement in 2021. A 39.5 grade is certainly a lot easier to stomach than a 28.7 grade, although, you know, again, uh, sub-40 blocking grade still isn't spectacular. You'd like to at least get that into the 50s, but maybe he can continue to improve. The thing you saw a step down from was the passing grade. He was an 80.3 in 2020, then it took a bit of a step down in 2021, so maybe some of that was just, there. you know, I don't want to say it was a worse situation necessarily, but maybe just the situation changing just kind of made things more difficult for Fant. That's a, a guess. I don't know if that's true, but it's potentially true, and maybe Seattle has a plan that they feel like they can use him for, but uh, these are the grades, and watching tape, I feel like this all checks out to me. So will Noah Fant improve with a change of scenery? Well, it's unfortunate because it seems like he would improve if he was playing with Russell Wilson, right? That would be the ideal situation, and with him being involved in a Russell Wilson trade makes that not possible, which is obviously unfortunate. There's no denying that. So because of this Noah Fant, uh, you know, situation with Drew Locke again, who, hey, uh, he knows Drew Locke. Uh, he's caught in passes from Drew Locke before, or maybe Geno Smith will be the guy. Those are kind of the, uh, that's kind of the question mark, is will he get an opportunity to really prove himself? Uh, I think right now he's still a solid tight end. I just think that the hope is he can kind of really improve and be, go from solid to really good or even great. And uh, he definitely has that potential. I think if the blocking gets better, that's what can really allow him to be, you know, that sets so much up for a tight end. And if he can improve on that, that's how he could really maybe thrive. But even for now, he's he's a valuable asset. So uh, it's interesting and has room to grow. So that's kind of what I think about this whole Noah Fant situation. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.